precautions, keeping the necessary physical distance, wearing your face mask, washing your hands, following all the COVID-19 protocols. As far as this event, um, just so that we can maintain some stability, you mute your mic when you're not speaking. And if you need to speak, um, as the speakers come on, raise up your hands if you want to speak. Um, ensure that you maintain situational awareness of your environment, that your headset does not shield you from hearing what um, is happening around your surroundings. And also use the chat button to ask questions or to make any comments. Okay. So this is the maiden event of, um, organized by the Women in Energy Committee of SPE Section 103. It's the first of its kind. We've gotten uh, good reviews. People are excited to want to be, to be a part of this event. So it's a good one. We're looking forward to a great evening, having necessary discussions and just having the interactions that at the end of um, this session, we can go out with some commitments. And as the theme says, we can go out with an action plan ready to go um, for this section and indeed for SPE Council in Nigeria. Okay, so we'll go right to the opening prayer. Do we have Imabong on the line? Do we have Imabong on the call to take us through the opening prayer? Okay, if she's not here, do we have anyone else that can take the opening prayer for us? May I? Yes, please. Okay. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for today. Thank you for this event. Thank you for as many have, you know, worked and put this together. We pray that you bless them in Jesus' name. As we engage in this event tonight, we pray that you would make it a success and you would help us gain valuable insights into the subject in the mighty name of Jesus. Let everything go smoothly and let us all have a, a, a course to thank you once we get out of here in Jesus' name. Blessed be your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Mervyn. All right, so we'll go to the next item on our agenda. So if you can see the screen, you have the agenda flashing. So we'll go into the introduction of guests and speakers. So as I said, we have uh, the privilege of having distinguished, a distinguished keynote speaker and also panelists to do justice to this topic. So we'll just go right into the citation. We'll take the citations for all um, six of them, the keynote speaker and the panelists, so that when we go into the keynote address and panel session, we'll just flow through and have a quality discussion and interactive session. All right. So the first on uh, the list is, of course, our keynote speaker, Professor Wumi Iledari. Professor Wumi Iledari has over 40 years of technical, professional, and academic experience in the economics of oil and gas industry and the global oil and gas economy. Currently, he serves as Ghana National Petroleum Corporation Professoral Research Chair in Oil and Gas Studies at the University of Cape Coast Oil and Gas Institute, Ghana. He's the Executive Director of the Emmanuel Eboga Foundation for Petroleum Industry Economics and Policy Advocacy in Abuja, Nigeria. PWI, as he's fondly called, previously worked as a petroleum stroke reservoir engineer for Shell Petroleum Development Company, Nigeria, between 1980 to 1983, and as a reservoir production engineer trainee with Mobile Producing Nigeria from 1979 to 1980. He publishes severally on upstream oil and gas economics and policy. He ranks among the top 500 Scopus authors in Nigeria from 2014 to 2019. He has received several professional awards, including the NAEE Lifetime Achievement Award, Outstanding Contribution to Petroleum Engineering in Information and Management Discipline in SPE Africa Region, SPE Nigeria Council Best Technical Paper Presentation, and the IAEE Outstanding Contribution to the International Association for Energy Economics. 
Professor Wumi Ledari, thank you for being here. Thank you for honoring our invitation. We accepted our invitation with a lot of enthusiasm, so we really appreciate. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for inviting me. Great. Okay, next on our list uh, is one of our panelists, Mr. Debo Fagbami. Mr. Debo Fagbami is the Chief Operating Officer of Zenergy Limited, as well as an Executive Director at All Data Wireline Services Limited. Based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, he oversees all of Zenergy's gas business, particularly in flare reduction and elimination strategies, while integrating it with other business areas of the company within the energy value chain. He has been an active volunteer for the Society of Petroleum Engineers, taking on several roles, both locally and internationally over the past several years. He's a past chairman of the Port Harcourt section of the society, and he is the immediate past chairman of the Nigerian Council of SPE. He's a past council member of the Nigerian Gas Association, where he served as a publicity secretary from 2014 to 2016, I was part of the team that delivered the 2016 International Gas Conference in Abuja, Nigeria. He's a member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers and is a registered engineer with the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Corin. Debo is a keen mentor who has mentored several young professional engineers across various disciplines and endeavors. Debo is widely travels, traveled and enjoys spending time with friends and family and manages to squeeze out time to perfect his golfing skills. Debo, thanks for being here. Again, very enthusiastic to be on this panel and very willing and supportive of the women in SPE. Thank you for being here, Debo. Can Thank you hear us, please? Uh, Ella, uh, okay, great. I'm cautiously enthusiastic. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Next, we have Madam Amina Mohamed Danmadi. She's a chemical engineer with the Department of Petroleum Resources. She has two decades of cognate experience in banking and engineering. She started her career as a banker, then moved to join the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, the regulatory arm of the Nigerian petroleum sector. She's a board member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers Abuja section council member of SPE Nigerian Council and chair Women Development Program Committee, Society of Petroleum Engineers Nigerian Council. Amina loves solving puzzles, is actively involved in charity and is a member of the Victims of Violence Foundation Abuja. Hello, Madam Amina, great to have you. She's Hello. also one Good of the leaders you. of women in SPE a great advocate for women. So great to have you on this discussion and looking forward to your insights on this discussion. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Great, great. All right. Next on the panel is Mrs. Chineye Chukuneke. She's a highly accomplished reservoir engineer with over 18 years experience spanning across Africa, Europe, and Australia. Her expertise in dynamic modeling, production forecasting, reservoir surveillance, well planning and execution has led to several opportunities that were identified and matured, thereby leading to growth of portfolios and assets. Chine obtained a BSc in Petroleum Engineering from the University of Ibadan and an MSc in Reservoir Engineering from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, Trondheim, Norway. She has been an active volunteer in SPE for over 18 years and has reviewed over 70 technical papers. She was the chairperson of the SPE's Women Development Program for 2019 and 2020 sessions. And she's currently the chairperson of SPE's Our Women Our Pride, which aims to promote and increase women participation in leadership roles in various facets of the oil and gas industry in Nigeria. In her spare time, she loves cooking, spending time with her family, and reading novels. In addition, she volunteers for many charities and not-for-profit organizations, particularly those with focus on empowering young women. Hi, Chineye. No doubt you bring valuable contribution to this panel. Thanks Definitely. for Definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. Okay. 
And next we have our able moderator, Mrs. Stella Obodu, the one that is going to challenge things and stir up the discussion. Stella Obodu is a petrophysicist with, Stel with Shell Nigeria, where she has worked for the past nine years. She holds a bachelor's degree with first class in mathematics from University of Lagos at Coca. She's an active member of SPE and has served as student affairs chair, secretary of SPE section 103, and as the immediate past student program chair for SPE Nigeria Council. She has received various awards from SPE and other organizations for her involvement with students. She has also been involved in organizing various mentorship programs for female students in university and secondary schools. Stella is married to Ejiro and they have a daughter, Zeno. Hello, Stella. Are you ready for the discussion? I'm ready for them. <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> last but not least, so we save the best for the, for the last, right? We have our ABLE section chair. Um, the one that has been very supportive of the Women in Energy Committee and has supported all, us all the way to be able to have this program. Mr. Adebola Bada, the section chairman of SPE Port Harcourt. He's an outstanding HSE professional who is currently operation safety leader for Total e and P Nigeria in the area of engineering, construction, and project discipline. Also the HSE and epidemiology studies focal points for Total's COVID-19 special task force. He has about 24 years continuous experience in the oil and gas upstream business with six of these years working with ExxonMobil and 18 years with Total. Adebola Bada is a senior member of SPE with 22 years continuous membership and has participated in SPE activities in many places in the world. Adebola has won service and professional awards at different levels in SPE and in other professional organizations. Since 1999, when he joined SPE, he has provided selfless service to the community at large. Currently the chairman of SPE Port Harcourt section 2020-2021 and the membership chair at the SPE Nigeria Council. He's also an avid volunteer for SPE volunteer for SPE International in different roles. Adebola Bada is a passionate advocate of the boy and girl child education and development. He's involved in STEM, SDG 2030, event coordination and speaks in several organizations all over the world. Thank you, Mr. Bada, for giving us the platform to have this event and for enabling these discussions. Thank you. Please confirm you're with us. Yes, I am. Thank you. I was on transit, okay. so I'm stable now. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, great. So there you have it. I, I don't think we can have a better crop or a better suited keynote speaker and panel for this discussion. So indeed, we are privileged and we look forward to great discussions and great interaction. So we'll go back to our program and then we'll take the Women in Energy Chair's welcome address, Mrs. Shola Robinson. She's the one that has worked behind the scenes to make sure that everything comes together. She, she birthed this idea and today we're here having this discussion. So. Mrs. Shola Robinson, over to you for your welcome address. Okay, thank you so much, Ella. Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, so, Ella, uh, you are not allowing the baby to join the discussion, and he's making a hell of a noise there. So, I think you need to bring the baby into this discussion. Okay, thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have the singular honor to welcome you all to this event. Uh, my name is Mrs. Shola Robinson. I'm the Women in Energy Chair for SP Section 103. The Women in Energy Win is a committee resident with SP International with local committees and sections and chapters. The purpose of the WIN committee in SP is to promote gender diversity in the oil and gas industry by attracting, retaining, and engaging women in STEM. We aim to create opportunities for women to enable them to step into leadership roles and pursue their career goals. 
In other words, our primary aim is to empower women to take up leadership roles. In the business world, women leaders are still a minority. This statement comes as no surprise to most of us. What is surprising really is that men outpace women in leadership roles across every sector in the world. Corporate, government, education, medicine, military, religion, and even nonprofit organizations. Yes, even our own SP. In its 34 years of ex existence, the Nigerian Council is yet to feature a female council chair, while the sections are still having it as exceptions rather than the norm. This brings to mind the word spoken by the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg 16 years ago. Women belong in all places where decisions are being made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. Meanwhile, the International Women's Day 2021 campaign theme is choose to challenge. We are told that we have the responsibility to choose to challenge inequality, call out bias, question stereotypes, and address all forms of gender inequity because a challenged world is an at-large world. And from challenge, that's when we can have change. So having all this in mind, we decided to put together this curtain raiser event with a theme, advancing women into the SPE leadership, a call to action. The objective is not to gather people together again, you know, just to listen to eloquent speeches, but to come up with concrete resolution on this matter. So today we seek to identify the barriers impeding women from advancing to the, to the top in SP Nigeria. Two, discuss ways to break down these barriers. Three, secure commitment from section 103 leadership to achieve a female section chair in you know, a few years to come. Develop a roadmap towards this goal. Declare a call for action on electing a female SP Nigeria Council Chair. We have brought together seasoned and highly respected men and women within the SP Nigeria community to do justice to this topic. Uh, thank you, uh, Ella. Ella has introduced them and read you know, their citation. So you can see we have people you know, uh, in here that can uh, speak, you know, on this. Uh, this event is a cotton razor event to a bigger event coming up in March, celebrating the International Women's Day. We usually have this every year. Hello, can anyone hear me? I think uh, I'm off. We can, we can hear you. You are home. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> Looks like everything went frozen. Okay, so this event is a curtain raiser event to a bigger event coming up in March, celebrating the International Women's Day. We usually have this every year. Details will be out soon, but just to give you a peek into this upcoming program. Um, Simeon, please, can you put up that, um, the flyer, you know, to our photo contest? So uh, just to give you a peek into this upcoming program, we have a pre-event photo contest where SP members are invited to post their choose to challenge images on one of our social media handles, which will later, uh, later um, uh, give information on that. And the photo that receives the highest number of likes wins the competition. Please watch out for these on our social media spaces. So, well, I'm excited and super expectant about today's event. I don't know about you. So ensure you stay to the end of this program. In case you are thrown out due to poor network, please make sure you come right back in as soon as you can so you don't miss anything. So sit back and have a good time. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Shola. Great welcome address. And indeed, it just goes to show you the passion she has for the Women in Energy Committee and all the work that she has put in. So look, watch out for our IWD contest, put up your pictures and then like the pictures on our social media pages. So we'll go right ahead to the opening remarks by the Port Harcourt section chair, Mr. Adibola Bada. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for this uh, event. Um, honestly speaking, uh, for Section 103, I think uh, we've been on the forefront of uh, women um, uh, programs uh, for a long time. Um, but I agree completely with the theme um, and the call for action regarding we actually need um, a woman um, to lead the section and the action has to start now. So in the beginning of this uh, tenure, uh, that was in September, uh, we made it very clear that uh, just like the Minister of State, we said this is the year for, for gas. Uh, also for us, uh, this is a uh, year for women. So it was also very intentional for us when we were trying to nominate the officers back in May, June. And uh, having known that, okay, as the program's chair, we are moving, I will be moving into as the section chair. I was very intentional about it. And I was saying that I would need 50% of women in the board, which of course would be unprecedented uh, in section 103. We managed to go, get 43%. Uh, one declined, one of the women declined, of course, and uh, we don't know why, <laughs> but now we got 40%. So the 40% uh, is still very unprecedented, honestly, in section 103 uh, ever since. And the build up to that is just to see how we can develop from that uh, to actually have many women standing up there uh, to lead. Um, we know they lead in several committees, but to actually hold the affairs uh, of the section in entirety. Uh, so we'll be talking about most of these things uh, during the course of the panel. And then, uh, of course, we would like as much as possible to embrace uh, many of the comments, especially from other sections that have been able to do this, and also from SP International that have been doing this. Uh, we will be very open to, for comments and advice, uh, but this should not end with only Section 103. I think the lessons that we we'll learn from Section 103, also we have to push it to other sections that are still having this kind of uh, issue. So I'm um, very happy and excited uh, for all, everyone that have been able to, especially the panelists, our keynote speaker who have been a tremendous support to section 103. And of course, uh, our section director, Debo, that is also present. So I'm very hopeful that we'll have a very good uh, uh, discussion. Uh, I just want everyone of us to, to relax and just enjoy it. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bada. Indeed, it's commendable. The efforts that um, have been made to encourage women participation is, is visible in the board. And, but we still have a long way to go, and uh, which is why we're having this session today. So we really want to delve into the issues. We know that it's not for a lack of qualification. The women are qualified, so what is it? So I'll leave all that discussion. We have the keynote speaker, we have the panelists. So let's get right into the meat of the discussion and invite Professor Wumi Iledare to take us through the keynote address. After this, the moderator, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Stella Ogodu will, will pick up from there. So Professor Wumi, please go ahead with your keynote address. Well, <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, <clears throat> I do not know uh, how to begin, but let me recognize uh, the spirit of volunteerism that is uh, evident in Nigeria. Uh, I've been part of SP now in Nigeria since... Uh... Please, can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Not it's yet. coming it's up. coming up. Okay, just slow. Anyway, but you can Actually, hear me Actually, we are the end of the slideshow. Can you go back? Already, it's just at the end of the slideshow. So you need to scroll back to the beginning, sir. 
All right, let me try again. What about now, please? Yes, now. Yes. No, it has gone. It has gone again. It has gone off again. Okay. Can you see it now? Can you see anything now? Yes, we can see it. Okay, uh, okay. okay. you are at the beginning now. All right. Let me let me start with slideshow, and from the beginning, and then you can see you can see it now. Yes. Yes. Sir. Everything all right. All right. Yes. Let me. Thank all the past chair person of the SP Nigerian Council. Let me also appreciate all the past section chairpersons of the SP Nigerian Council. And let me appreciate all the volunteers. In fact, SP is a model of volunteerism in Nigeria. And I, I've been part of SP now since 1975. And I was actually the student uh, president, student chapter president in UI. And allow me to greet all my great UIs. And I know you are many on number who are actually here on this platform. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve SP all over the, all the years that I've been associated with you. I mean, I've, even when I was in the US, I attended SP meetings uh, regularly almost every year, nearly every year since 1986. And SP Nigeria is a model organization and I commend you. I also want to commend you for the effort you are making to engage our women in leadership position over the years. And we are moving up and uh, we are not going to relent because effectiveness requires us not to leave anything behind. The moment you leave a portion of a group behind, you become ineffective. Let me personally recognize the managing director of uh, Walter Smith, who I think I saw when he came in, uh, is a partner in making sure that uh, we, we engage the professionals irrespective of their gender. And I think we are, we are moving on up. With respect to SP International, I think I can attest to the fact that there is no glass ceiling in SP International with respect to becoming the president of SP. Over the last how many years, I personally have interacted with more than six SP presidents that are women. In fact, the Medi past SP president, Shana, is a transformational leader. And so the society loses when you don't engage all who are capable. And you can see my new name now. It's a friend of mine who said that, no, you are capable of speaking to women because you are E for she. And that is what I've been. Even in my household, I ensure until Madame says go, you don't go. Because if you go where Madame did not say go, you're on your own. But if she says go, he goes with you. And that's going to be my, 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 my crux of the, the speech. If you are going to take away uh, what I want to share with you, take it from me and I believe it. There is nothing like glass ceiling in SPE for women. There is nothing that says a woman cannot be the Nigerian Council Chair in Nigeria. No, in fact, if not because I was hoping that this year we are going to have a 
a, a vice woman chair. And I advocated for it with all the being in me. And that's probably where I'm going to be talking to you as the action we need to take. It borders on what we call mentorship and sponsorship. And let me gladly say to you that even when we, you know, in, in 10 months, I'm about to leave the ALD position. And in your last council chair, vice chair election, the top candidates, we have a woman and we have a man. And that is commendable. Even the top candidates for the ALD, we have a woman and we have a man. So we are making progress in Africa. And people did not vote because somebody is a woman or a man, but because the features I'm going to be sharing with you is common. So when you look at leadership, it's about action, not position. Action requires certain things if you are going to be an effective leader. So I want to put to you, my dear woman, and I hearing it from Professor E for she, glass ceiling is a metaphor. And it's more, nothing more than a reflection of invisible barriers that defends women from rising beyond a certain level in an hierarchy. So glass ceiling does not exist in SPE, in my opinion, but it carries with it what I consider if we are going to take action, we must make sure that those invisible barriers are nullified. And you can look at the barriers from four different categories. What you call structural barrier. Or a good way to look at it is cultural barrier. So you can say structural or cultural barriers. All right. So these are things that you may not see, but they exist. And those are the things that are, constitute what we call glass ceiling. But no, no, no. It's not that there is a way you cannot go as a woman. It's just that there are so many meanderings in the tunnel darkness here and there that you have to meander to come at the end of the tunnel. And they are cultural, structural, institutional mindsets, individual mindsets, and lifestyle choices. These are the barriers that we must collectively nullify. So you, you're thinking in terms of uh, the culture of your organization, the, the call for personal expectations, and about for how do you balance life choices. So the moment we identify some of these barriers, it becomes a lot easier for us to be able to take actions that will nullify them and take us to where we want to take. For example, there are policies and practices and other norms that are inadvertently in favor of a particular group here, men, when it comes to taking a leadership position. And they are indirectly, systematically disadvantaging to marginalized women. So they are not necessarily intended to do that, but somehow, it does. I know I've been recorded. When I was at LSU, I was the first assistant professor to start a particular program there. None before me was hired. I, I built the organization. Don't forget that I'm a black man with an accent and in a, in a college that I was the only black. Indirectly, the black people that come there are those that I hired to be my associate or research assistant for 
the time I was there. There comes the need to elevate us to director's position. There is a director for research, there is a director for policy, and there is an edge. The two director positions were given to the people that actually interviewed and hired. And they had to get approval to make me director for what was head position before. No, it, it was not discrimination. It was just that the other two as a structural and system support for them. So basically what I'm trying to say is that there's this invisible structural and cultural barriers that we as SPE, we have to recognize and fight in order for us to be able to make everything a level playing field. Second barrier, institutional mindset. Again, it's not uncommon and it's not that it is right that we think that there are certain jobs that has a masculinized way of delivering. And there are certain jobs that require feministic behavior. And before we knew it, those were the mindset. Forgive me if I give personal example, maybe you can relate to that. I had three boys and one girl. When I moved to Baton Rouge in 1992, my boys were into sport and my girl was not going anywhere. What did I do? I quickly, started a soccer team for women and began to coach my daughter. So I did not allow the mindset that she's a woman to spoil, stop her from enjoying everything that my other children were enjoying. So the mindset must be corrected. That is, there are gender bias and stereotyping when someone owes about a group that are inconsistent with the behavior thought to be necessary to succeed. The tendency is just to dismiss in the institution that no, this job is not for a woman, it's not for a man, and so on and so forth. We must be conscious of that in order to be able to take the necessary action to get women to where they rightly belong. I do not believe that women are less effective if a job is considered to be masculinized or a man is less effective when the role is feminized. These are institutions that needs to change about this type of mindset. Of course, you have individual mindset that we are fighting too. And I want to say that You, there's the tendency for you to say that because you are a woman, it's not helping you to be who you want to become. Oh, you can't leave your home to go to the club to meet other corporate executives. You are afraid of what the society will be. There's a tendency for people to think that women lack confidence. I don't have that in my household. Oh. Listen, I want to give you a practical example of what women can do if they have self-confidence about themselves. We wanted to build a house in Baton Rouge. And my wife is the type that is outgoing. I'm the one that stayed behind, just supporting. Okay? And we went to this bank, they said, you must bring $100,000 before they will give us a $750,000 loan to build our house. And they thought my wife would be discouraged. She just came back to me and said, darling, we are going to do it. I didn't ask her how, right? That is what it takes. For you must have the desire, my dear sisters, that you want that leadership. That I want to be the chairman of the council. I don't want to work, mention him. There's no reason why Mrs. Tafolabi of Exxon Mobil wouldn't have become chairman of Nigerian Council. So I want you to be honest with yourself. 
and ask yourself, when you get to that tunnel and there seem to be a roadblock, what do you do? Do you go back into your cell or you say, no, I'm going to bulldoze that barrier because that chairman of that council, I want it. I want it. And that does not mean men will not be around you. Let me be honest with you. I am disappointed and you forgive me that the opportunity to make the woman vice chairman was lost this year in the council. But those are barriers. That should not discourage somebody who desire that to continue to, to push for it. You must not allow your work-life balance to scare you if you want something. You mustn't. But these are individual mindsets that make it impossible for you to attain your desire. It's not because there is a ceiling. Your lifestyle choices is very important. This is where the spouse comes in. This is where you must communicate with your spouse because you are advancing in your career. The reason to take away this mentality of breadwinner, caregiver priority. Yes, it's a Pareto optimality decision. It is impossible for somebody to be better off without someone being worse off. There are choices you have to make. So your lifestyle choices must not debar you, but those are some of the things that is making it difficult for women to get to where they are supposed to be. All right? Now, how do we overcome this barrier in SPE? We must overcome the structural and cultural barrier. This idea that this is the way we do it. Men is the edge and woman is an alpha. No, those are cultural settings that is really making it more difficult for women to assert themselves. So we must eradicate that. And I want to really commend the current generation women it's not going to be difficult in the next two to three years for us to have a council woman chair in Nigeria. I mean, the, 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 the vitality, the dedication, the spirit of volunteerism is highly commendable compared to the past. So I say kudos to the current generation women compared to my, my mates, which some of these barriers have limited them. We have to change the institutional mindset that suggests that one, one particular profession is good for women, the other profession is not good for women. And then, of course, changing the mindset is very important. So these are one of the things I want to quickly suggest as, as I round up. How do we overcome the structural barrier? Key words, mentorship and sponsorship. And they're not the same thing. When you mentor someone, you are trying to advance him to be the best in his current position. When you sponsor someone, you are the one that is actually advocating for him, I mean, for her, for the next position. So mentorship and sponsorship is very important. There was a woman in the SP in Nigeria that was targeting to become the next vice chairwoman. Then after that vice chairwoman, she becomes the chairman of the council. Then after the chairman of the council said, she becomes the ALD, next woman ALD. That's what we mean. And I'm an advocate. I'm an advocate and I have determined to, to whatever it takes. If, that, if, they, if not because they truncated my, my plan by not electing a vice chairman, my plan will, but I'm not let, letting go. There must be sponsorship of women that are capable, not because they are women, but because they have the capability. It takes sponsorship and mentorship. I mean, mentorship first and sponsorship. Institutional mindset. 
women must be proactively and consistently communicate what they desire to your wife. I mean, sorry, to your husband. You must let, I never can believe why any man would think he could be the CEO of Shell and his wife cannot desire to be CEO of, 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 of Shell or Total. I, I never know that. Twice, I left my base to follow my wife to her job, and I was never worse off. So again, you need to change that institutional, cultural thinking that your wife is your helpmate because you are the breadwinner and she's the caretaker. No, there must be a generational shift. And if we want to overcome the barrier for women to get to the top, we must stop this institutional mindset. And it begins with the woman. Communication will help put to rest any assumption made about what women can do or cannot do. Individual mindset. Avoid women. Listen to me. Don't volunteer for time-consuming tasks that are not visible. You see, a, a man in your office will not be thinking of serving the guests and the visitors. He will want to be the one to set up the projector so that all the people that are coming will see him. Stop that. Change the mindset of people around you that those tasks you can do also. And I'm glad that new generation women are doing this, are they, they are doing it well. Don't volunteer to be the one to serve tea when there's a meeting. Sit down, cross your leg with your suit and call one of your subordinates who is a man. Hey, go and bring water for this, our guest. Instead of you who is the boss, you are the one running around to serve the water. No, reject all of those seemingly on tasteful responsibility in your office. Make sure the toughest job you volunteer to do it. That will change the mindset of whoever is the boss. Uh, I know there, there's not enough time. Accommodating your life choices. My friend, go back to when you were a lady, you are the only two ladies in a class. How did you be the best graduating student in your class? Because you made choices. Seek out employers that can value adjustment of tight schedule because of who you are. And they will better run. My niece, my little bride, when I got married, has never worked outside the house for nearly 15 years. Why? Because she looked for an empl employer who understand the value and adjust the working schedule. There's no need for you to feel, how would I call it, uh, empathy for yourself because you're a woman and you want to take care of your child. Let your employer value you so much that they will adjust to take you. So we must find employers who we understand the lifestyle choices that we have to make. We did not create ourselves as a woman and God did not limit us. Remember the Bible in the Bible. She was a woman, and the king could not go to fight. And she said, okay, I will go, but I will be the one to take the credit. Pareto optimality condition must be in your brain. It is impossible for something to be better off without something being worse off. So accommodate your life choices quickly. I know your transitional leadership matters. You know, a transformational leader encourages, inspires, and motivates. If we are going to overcome the barrier of getting to the top, we need to develop transformational leadership skill, which really modeling the way, encouraging the heart, inspiring the shared vision, enabling others to act and challenging the process. As a woman leader, you must challenge the process. You don't have to be confrontational because it's not your nature. It's not your nature to be confrontational as a woman. And that's a big skill to you. Oh, for those men that are married, it's because they don't listen to their wives. That's why they are not successful. The success that I enjoy today all over the world is because I listen to my wife, even if it is grudgingly. Because 
they inspire a vision that they see in you. Oh, look at this COVID-19. Look at all the countries that were governed by women. The COVID-19 impact was less. So if you don't use women in, your, in their capacity, you are the loser. Key features of transformational leadership that are gender friendly. Women possess much more of it if given the chance. So, so my dear sisters, nobody will stop you from getting up there if you know the knowledge of the business and you display it. Listen, don't get shy away. Those are part of the reasons. When men who know next to nothing are boasting and running around, you are the assistant doing all the job. They are taking the credit. That let people know you know the business respectfully. Let them see your drive. Because if you can drive your husband to be successful, you don't need a driver to be successful. The key you must have the desire to lead. You must let people know that you have the desire to lead and not because you want to be a transactional leadership. And that's what you see. I don't want to mention them. Some of the limitations that is affecting Nigerian women today are one particular example that destroy a president without the president's knowledge. We call them transactional leaders. All they want is a reward for being in a position. We also know people that we literally put themselves in a place that they don't desire because they know how to smile. And, who, and men who are currently in the advantages of putting people in the where they want, they, they are transactional leader too. A transformational leader will never put a woman where the woman does not belong. So these are features that you must let people see in you and those barriers will disappear. Most women are more honest than men. Most women are more intelligent than men. They are decisive. They know, have you ever seen a woman who want a man and did not get that man? Eh? Tell me. So if a woman desires to lead, nothing can stop her. And she's not going to be a transactional leader. So let me round up by saying that women in leadership must have confidence in themselves to motivate others. But it all begins with the desire to lead, to break the barrier, not the ceiling, because there's no ceiling as far as I'm concerned. What I see are just meandering paths that must be bulldozed, and it begins with your desire. Not an ordinate ambition, but a desire cultivated in you from birth to be a leader. Once you have the desire to lead, the next thing is to discipline yourself. You cannot be conformed to the image of the world. That's like what Paul says. Do not be conformed to the world system. But be transforming your mind. And transformation begins with discipline. Whereby you know where you want to go. And it's not that you are going to crush everybody to get there. You are going to let the, the, the traits of leadership that is inborn in you take possession of you. And this is what I think SP Nigeria Council must do. We are mentoring the young generations that we did not have in our time because of what I call cultural barriers, whereby, oh, yeah, I, I, no, I can't let my daughter or my son suffer. So I'd rather truncate my career. If it helps me today, and I'm going to say it, that Mrs. Afolabi did not become the first chairwoman for Nigerian Council, that would have paved the way for others. And I hope that my Sateris Paribos some of the people that have been mentored today, within the next four years, we have a female chairperson for Nigerian Council. It is in your hand, ladies, because there is no ceiling in SPE as to what you can become. 
you must be determined, you must be diligent, and you must be dedicated. First, it's about desire. It is discipline to get your desire. It is determination to pursue your desire, and you must dedicate, you must be dedicated to do. A good leader inspires people to have confidence in the leader. A great leader inspires people to have confidence in themselves. This is my suggestions, SP Nigeria. Let us motivate, let us inspire, and let us increase the confidence of these great volunteers that you have. And there are so many of them. See Lagos section, see Wari section, see Benin. Look at all of those sections that have been chaired by women, how much they brought to it. And by the way, uh, the women are the one getting the best papers in your catch them young. The potential to be great leaders is in our women. And thank you for allowing me. I know I went over the time and I apologize for that. God bless you and grant us our desires with determination and discipline. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ladere. Please, a round of applause for him. A round of applause. That was a really thought provoking discussion and uh, speech. Just to give us a brief summary of what we've heard so far, he pointed, he started it out with a call to action. The moment you leave behind a portion of the group behind, you lose effectiveness. You become effective. In SP, there is no glass ceiling. Rather, he sees it as a meandering path for most of us, which can be bulldozed. Especially considering that we have had at least six past female SP, SP international presidents. Leadership is not a position. It's a call to action. It's the activities you undertake as an individual. To become a leader as a woman, to aspire to greatness, especially within SP as an organization, there are certain barriers that we need to overcome. We have the structural barriers, which has to do with our social standards and cultural mindsets. We have the institutional barriers, which talks about the professions and the rules that govern our interactions with people. We have the individual mindset, both of the men you're working with and of the women who are seeking leadership positions. And then we have the lifestyle choices, those decisions we women make on a day-to-day -day basis that may hinder or progress our path to leadership. We need to overcome these barriers. And one of the ways you can do that is by mentorship and uh, sponsorship. You have mentors who groom you with, and train you on becoming leaders and you have sponsors who speak out for you in those meetings where you're not invited. You also have to look at um, the kind of decisions you make your life choices, those decisions you make, are those decisions the right one, considering the plans that you have for yourself. You also have to make sure that you are not undertaking tasks that do not add to your political ambition. That's how we interpret it. So don't be doing things just because you're a woman. Make sure every activity you do puts you in the spotlight and gives you that position for progression. You need to develop transformational leadership skills. Of course, it showed us the charts. And most of those skills that we're looking for in transformational leaders are skills that are already inherently present in women. And for those of us that have been able to groom ourselves, you can find out that you're able to operate on the leadership level at par with your male colleagues because those skills come as second nature to you. But finally, he rounded it up with, it all comes with a desire to lead. If you do not have a desire to lead as a woman, then... No matter what happens, even if they, you have mentors and sponsors pushing you, it might not be enough for you. You might still not get to that point where we are looking for. He rounded up with talking to us about who a good leader is. A good leader instills confidence in himself and a great leader instills confidence in his followers. In fact, that is a very a fantastic way to round up the um, session. And uh, Professor Iladere, once again, we really appreciate you. I will once again, acknowledge the presence of our panelists and I'll ask them to please put on their micro, uh, uh, videos and microphone. Adebola Bada, current section chair of SP Portacot. Yes, your video is on. Amina Mohammed, please Amina, if you could put on your video and on your mic. Debo Fabemi, yes, I can see you, sir. And Chineye, please, if you could put on your video.
So thank you very much. So I'll be directing a series of questions to you. We are supposed to give the speakers, our panelists, um, between four to five minutes each to give us their perspective on what Prof has talk, uh, spoken. But I would be directing the conversation and asking some questions just to make sure that we get a full uh, understanding and flair of what has happened. So my first question will go to Chine. Prof has spoken about structural barriers, policies, practices, and norms that favor a group. In your experience in SPE, working as a volunteer, what would you say the kind of structural barriers we've experienced as women would be? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Thank you for that question. Um, so what I would say that um, the, the structural barriers that I've seen, um, I would say is the the criteria, for example, just like Prof mentioned, just recently um, a lady indicated interest, you know, of being um, the vice council chair, very hardworking, has all it takes and all that. But the criteria, I believe, kind of disqualified or made her not to be selected. And so I, I think some of those criteria, the things that we need to look at again, are they really necessary to ensure the success of the tenure. Those criteria, is it just, are they just nice to have? Like uh, maybe a certain, somebody has to be at a certain position or somebody has to have this, or, I mean, the, 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 the person in question has proved beyond reasonable doubt that she can actually um, hold that position. She has held different positions and she has, you know, done very well in all the positions that she had, in fact, raised the bar. But for some structural barriers, like, okay, you must be this, you must be that, you must be that, that kind of disqualified her. So going forward, the question is, how very important are those uh, criteria? Is there a criterion that, you know, is just a nice to have that is not necessary to be there? Because that has, you know, in a way, cut off, you know, people that could have, you know, brought a lot of value to the table. So that's, that's one of the ways that I've seen that such structural barriers have kind of limited the women in, you know, getting leadership positions in SPE in Nigeria Council. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So my next question will be to our section chair, Paula Bada, Prof spoke on the need for mentorship and sponsorship. I know when you were giving your opening remarks, you made some comments about how you instituted a gender balance in your, you tried to institute a gender balance in your committee. How has that worked? Have you been able to sponsor people right from the YP or from the YP and then you brought them into section um, board? How have you been able to manage that space in terms of sponsorship and mentorship? I think you're muted. Well, we can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Stella. And uh, honestly, I appreciate uh, the presentation from the uh, keynote speaker. Um, I have a jottings of more than two pages from what uh, he has presented, and I'm very sure most of the things are, are just what he's saying off, off. They are not actually in the presentation. He said a lot of things that are actually in the presentation, and I took note of that. So thank you, Prof. Uh, so as I said earlier on, um, I think it is key for us to be very intentional about this. Okay, we have cultural issues. So we cannot compare, let's start from that, we cannot compare SPI with SP Nigeria. We cannot also compare that section, in fact, with section 103. So I'm trying to go straight to those areas we have problem. Let's start from there, section 103, and of course, S SP Nigerian Council. So I saw these problems, uh, SP section 103 was like created since 1987. And I have a list of all the chairmen, all, 
2012, we have only one woman since then, since 1987. And uh, when I was YP chairman, also for Section 103, and at the same time for council 2013, I was intentional about letting a woman succeed me. I was intentional about it. So most of the people that worked with me, I have two thought at least, but these are not ordinary YPs. They are super intelligent YPs. And of course, Stella is part of them. So people can see that this book can lead. So when it gets to the time and I made a recommendation and I said, we have the best people around here. These are the people. So it was not difficult for them to be voted for. And we have a woman, a woman, a YP. And since then we've been having women YPs. So we need to be intentional about it. We need to put structures in place. And that's what I said the other time. So when I was when I was programs chair, I saw this again and I said, we don't even have women in the section. Uh, it's a problem, except that we have some difficulties in some committees and then we had dug them into it. No, it shouldn't be like that. So I said in my tenure, I want 50%. And I was bragging actually about it. But I don't know how it to come, but I know it comes down to what uh, Prof was saying about the sponsorship, uh, no, yeah, sponsorship and mentorship. This mentorship, guys. It's a sponsorship advocate. So the men have to have an intentional behavior to also advocate for the women. So what are the skills that is needed? They have it all to be sincere more than the men. We have to be sincere and very clear about this. From primary school to secondary school, they are always needed. The men are always, we were, I mean, we can see clearly. So why are we getting to quality leadership positions? We are taking them out of the equation. And that's why it will be difficult for us to move forward as an organization. So, and I can see from September when we took over, we have 40% of the ladies in the board, in the board. Now in the entire working committee, we have two thirds of the ladies. And honestly speaking, Try to be looking at our programs. It's mainly from YP. In fact, from students to YP programs to section programs. It's not that we don't have other programs, but it's just that these ladies are super. They are coming out with programs like here and there, like every week. They are communicating. They are just making it happen. So this is an intentional thing. We need to advocate for women. It's not just for the women alone, but so that SP can move forward. We are getting stuck. We're having issues. So, and that's why I recognize some of the barriers that uh, Prof have talked about. We are going to make this, I, I don't know, maybe it's like a communicate or something. We are going to put this thing properly. And then we are going to let it be maybe in our bylaw or anything that can really support the institutionalization of this process. Not only that, the conti because if you have an institutional uh, thing in place, continuity is very easy. But we are not saying that we just want women to lead. I mean, Prof have mentioned a lot of uh, things that we know the skills that is, is needed, action. We want people with action. So, and uh, for me, I, I grew up with ladies, okay, junior, senior and I know a lot about ladies. And from there again, I have my first two children are ladies. And I hold them there and I told them very, very clearly, you have to be strong. <laughs> it is not, uh, forget about the culture because we have cultural issues a lot in Africa. So the need to be strong, there will be issues. So don't chicken away, don't say, okay, uh, I will have, uh, no, my husband is saying this. But I, I'm very sorry, I will quickly digress to another issue, which is about um, uh, the spouses. Honestly, I know we also have some problems with spouses, especially the men. They don't want their wife to do certain things. They are, there's a lot of issues with that. Who have raised these guys is the women. So we have to take it back again to the women, our boys. You need to raise them to respect and to champion women. Many guys don't see ladies as their colleague, their peers, or someone that is even better than them. They don't. So I mean, I will not, I will not train them, or I will not teach everybody about uh, marriage. How marriage is, 
I mean, we all, most of us are married. So it comes back to that. We need to train our men to be super men that can support females, not just only their wife, females generally have a lot of things to support, to help the society. So we have serious cultural issues. I belong to an organization, an NGO in Nigeria, where we are supporting boys. Because we have seen that many of the boys don't even have the leadership traits to even have a wife. So when they have wives, they start beating their wives, they don't understand, they can't communicate. So we identified a lot of those problems. And then we start tackling them right from primary to secondary school now. That's what we are doing. We call them, we explain to them. And then we call the women, don't teach these boys certain way that they cannot cry, that they have to be junior of the dad, that they have to, no. Let them be in the kitchen also. Share it. Let them develop as a man that can support a woman. So I'm not taking the blame back to the ladies, but I can also say we need to develop great guys that will support, mentor, and sponsor their women. I think, I hope I'm okay. not taking too much of a time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vola. I can see the uh, passion in you. But yes, indeed, at the end of this event, before the end, Professor Iladere and Debo, most especially, will be giving us their plan of action. Prof has already told us that we have missed the slot for vice council chair. So what is the plan going forward so that in the next three years or by next year, we we'll get that slot for a lady and then in the next three years, we'll have a female chair and a female vice council chair and a female incoming vice council chair. So we'll be expecting that from them by the end of this event. So my next question is to Amina. Prof did speak about life choices and how our life choices could um, affect our progression into leadership position. And just speaking from your perspective and your experience, I know you've had more years in SP, especially with respect to SP. Do you totally agree with that? Or do you actually think that maybe it's, because I personally, I think that maybe it is the decisions, the structural decisions made by SP in the way they hold their meeting, in the kind of events they want to have that may have affected us. And then being women, we have personal choices that decisions that we really cannot just let go because we are the caregivers. So from your own personal experience, would you say this is true and what changes could be made? Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you very much for having me and well done for Tarkot section for this um, um, wonderful program, you know, and timely too. Um, Professor Eledere's um, speak keynote was really, really inspiring. And it was really, you know, he hit on things that really should be talked about and things that, because sometimes some of the issues we have are actually the unconscious bias that we have. Because sometimes you do things that could, okay, let me give you myself as an example, you know, I mean, with SPE activities and leadership, how I even got to be close to Professor Iledari is through our SP activities. Every time I come to Lagos for Nais, we stay in the same hotel coincidentally. And because what, you know, cultural bias, every time I tell my mom that I'm traveling to Lagos for a meeting, are you going with your husband? And I'm like, no, ah, you alone, you know? So I had to be going with my son. Most of the SPE leaders and most people that know me in SPE also know my son because every year I come with him and they've seen him grow. So these are some of the things you do to, you know, when there's a barrier you have, you know, you have to find ways of um, overcoming it so that you can achieve what you want. I came with my son. It gave her comfort that, okay, I was not alone in Lagos and I was able to achieve my aim. And the meetings we had, because sometimes the council, um, the planning meetings are actually at night. 
So some women can't really attend because some of them have their babies with them in the rooms or something. And we have them at night because sometimes I go for those meetings with my son and he has to be sleeping at the back. So I think it's a balance. You have to moderate between, you know, doing what you have to do to achieve what you want to achieve. And then also the other side to have to be reasonable and also um, have to be reasonable and then put things in place that will work for everyone. We are women, we want, we, we are not really asking for equality, but equity. You know, women are different. Like um, there's a HBR um, article by Aviva who said that women are equal, but different. That if you want to hold a woman back, you should keep treating her like a man. The, we all know there are some things that we cannot do. So I think if the onus is on the leadership to also put things in place that are female um, friendly, you know, and then we'll be able to, and then we also have to get rid of the unconscious biases that we have, because some of them really do hold us back. So it's a balance and meeting halfway, I would say. And a lot of the SPE men, actually, they've been our allies. We have people, Mr. Chikese, Engineer Saka, you know, all of them that are really passionate about encouraging women and making sure that we get to the leadership position. And don't forget that, pre um, we, you know, we have very small numbers of females in engineering, in STEM. In, so it's not surprising that we have very few leaders as well, because you pick from the pool. If you have a small pool, it means you're going to have small numbers. So, but with all the advocacy, you know, with WDP, what we're, because this program is actually a testimony that WDP program, which was started in 2013, which I happen to be chairing this year, is actually making positive impact because we are here already. And there are so many young leaders, you know, young females that can actually lead SPE. And I really do hope that in the nearest future, we'll have the first female SPE chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amina. In fact, people will be asking, what are these examples of um, changes? Number one, I remember when I joined SPE, they used to do council meeting in Lagos or in different locations. So every last Saturday, people would have to fly to those different locations. But along the line, and of course, a lot of us couldn't make it because it was just not feasible. But along the line, they finally converted to video conferencing. And I'm sure everybody would have realized that that was when we had an explosion in the amount of female volunteers that were willing, willing to take up positions as committee chairs because it was now much easier to report on your activities and to interact with other committee members. So yes, indeed. So our next speaker is Debo. I hear Debo has some slides for us. Um, Please, can we set Debo up so that he can share his screen? Debo, confirm you have slides for us, right? It's still going to take the same four minutes, but he needs to talk about um, the work he has done of, around um, women empowerment, especially in SPE. And while he's at it, Debo, please address the question, my question. You have been section chair for 103 and you have been council chair for 103. You are a section director. What is in the plan for bringing up a female section chair for section 103 within the next two years. Okay, we know who our next year, who the next section chair is, but we still have opportunities to choose a female for the next two years, and we have a lot of capable women. So, what is the plan? What is the succession planning looking like? Can we push people down and inject our names now? Okay, thank, thank you so much, uh, Stella. Um, just to confirm that everybody can see my screen, I'm, I'm sharing. Uh, does, indeed, uh, indeed, we can. Now. Can you all still see it? Y yes. Okay, yeah. So I'm, I'm basically, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity, Section 103. Uh, I'm a proud member of Section 103 myself. And uh, it's, uh, you know, a privilege to be part of this uh, conversation. Uh, many thanks to Professor Nidari. You know, it's always, uh, you know, uh, a difficult one when you have to speak after a professor has spoken. Uh, and you wonder what, uh, what else do you want to speak uh, about? And uh, in my particular case, I have a few sections of my slides that have already been declassified by Professor Redari. So I'm going to basically uh, scan through those, but I'm going to focus more on what I consider, you know, the operational, looking at this uh, discussion from the operational 
uh, uh, perspective, you know, of SP Nigeria Council, not just from the council's uh, point of view, but also from the section's uh, viewpoint as well. You know, so I know it's uh, women in uh, advancing women into SP leadership, a call to sincere action. That is what I've injected in there, you know, just to tickle us a little bit because the, the action is on all sides, you know, the leadership of SP in Nigeria. Uh, action from members, action from the ladies, the women themselves, and also from the men, you know, and uh, because the, the core of what we do in SPE has to do with uh, volunteering. And, you know, just to demonstrate this, um, if, you, if you look at this uh, slide uh, that I'm uh, sharing right now, we're looking at the um, demographic splits or, or gender splits really of uh, sections uh, for the last board year across all the five sections in Nigeria. And uh, if you look at it, you know, the top three sections there, I, I intentionally uh, boxed them together, Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt. This is actually sorted out in order of um, high participation of females or involvement of females in the, the boards of these sections. Uh, Lagos section is topping that chart, followed by Abuja and Port Harcourt, then Benin and Wari. Uh, Lagos is 42% of women. The women uh, on the bar, I've painted it nice pink color there. Uh, you can see the women 42% for Lagos, 27% uh, in Abuja, 25% in Port Harcourt. You know, I mean, this is a little bit, uh, I mean, it's not very, very encouraging. You know, even what uh, the section chairman of Port Harcourt said, that he came determined to, I mean, with, with an intentional political viewpoint in trying to ensure that there is diversity and equity across the genders. Now, if we skip to the current body year, okay, that's 2020, 21. Uh, the top Lagos is now at par in terms of the gender splits. You know, you have fifty percent of women and fifty percent of, of men. Abuja has knocked it up a little bit. Same with Kohako. Warrior and Benin have swapped places between fourth and fifth. However, uh, they have actually improved in terms of the number of um, the, the ratio of, of male to female, as it were, of female. You know, but there's still a lot that can be done. Now, moving on, this is SP Nigeria Council. Okay, uh, this is the council. We looked at the current council and two councils uh, backwards. In other words, the council that I led in 2019, Joe Wangwe and Tunji Akiwumis. Uh, if you look at it, uh, the uh, council, as the council members, in terms of demographic splits, you know, it's, uh, I mean, the highest was this year, which is 22%, which again is still not very, very uh, encouraging coming from the point of view of council. And this is probably what, part of what is sparking some of these conversations that we're having. Now, if you look at the nice planning committees, you know, if you go back three years by taking away this current uh, 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 nice planning, you know, so starting from Chikis this time, uh, we had 35% female, in 2019, when I took over, we had 37%, and then we dropped again during Joe's tenure to 32%. Maybe I'm doing something nice there because my own came out tops. I know Chike is in this uh, meeting, so I, I think I have bragging rights about Chike. But the point anyway is that we have uh, this kind of demographics, which is involving all the planning committee uh, membership, not just the leadership of the planning committees that is co-chairs and chairs, but we're looking at all the members, all the volunteers from the volunteer pool that contributed to delivering uh, the conference. But the fact of the matter is that these statistics are actually not much different from what happens globally, you know, because if you look at Fortune 500 companies, you know, women actually hold 19% of board seats and they occupy roughly about 15% of C suite positions, that's executive level positions. And indeed, there are only about 4% of women CEOs, you know, in Fortune. 500 copies, uh, companies. So you can work out the number. A lot of 500 copies, uh, companies, 4% are a very, very small percentage. You know, so it's actually, so if at all, in SP Nigeria Council or in SP Nigeria, we're actually not doing too badly, you know, from the point of view of the whole demographics. But when we're talking of leadership, which I've not been able to zone in on, I'm sure that we are probably not as well as these uh, 1,500 companies are doing. Now, I'm not going to dwell on this because Prof, like I said, has already dealt with the barriers to leadership. It looks like we're both researching from the same playbook, you know. But in terms of overcoming the barriers, you know, he also mentioned, he talked about us getting the ladies. We encourage you guys to get mentors 
and a sponsor to be able to advocate for pushing up the ladder to leadership uh, uh, positions. Now, in terms of overcoming your institutional mindset, Prof spoke extensively about it. But what I will add is that we need to be proactive and consistent in communicating your desires, right? Prof consistently mentioned that there's a particular lady who has indicated interest. Now, there are so many ladies, you know, I can, I mean, when I was preparing for this uh, 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 event, you know, I, on my head, a lot of women's names were popping up. A lot of active women in SP Nigeria who have uh, demonstrated the spirit of volunteerism, you know, across a, diverse, a, a divergent uh, number of roles, as it were, within the SPA career. So there are quite a number of them that are doing it already. Now, so it's not just about doing it, but you need to be able to communicate your willingness, your ability and your ability to be able to deliver on these things. Now, in terms of individual mindset, Prof mentioned it, volunteer to do what makes you visible. Take over the controls of the projectors and all of that. Don't go and be serving food. Don't go and be looking at the caterers. As a matter of fact, if you have an opportunity, right, to be the person to select people for some of these activities, assign those tasks, right, rather than ask for, asking for volunteers, okay? So I'm speaking to the women specifically now. Rather than asking for, for volunteers, assign fellow men. Let them go and look after the caterers. Let them go and serve the drinks. Let them go and coordinate all of that, right, so that you have a fair balance in some of these things. And of course, in lifestyle choices, you want to initiate conversations within the SP community that will force our program schedules to take place at favorable times, you know, for, for the women. For example, why can't we have board meetings, you know, on Saturdays, weekends, you know, as a brunch or breakfast meeting, rather than having uh, meetings in the night. In Port Harcourt, I know, I mean, back in the day, before COVID restrictions, we used to have board meetings at 5 o'clock and they will end at 8 o'clock. And you know, the way, you know the way Port Harcourt is, people are driving home and all of that. At different times, and of course, the spouses should be concerned. Nobody wants his wife driving home alone at that time of the night. So, some of these things are things that we can also try to manage, you know, to be able to better our stance. Now, very quickly, looking at the operational point of view of SP Nigeria Council, you know, Prof. Ilidari talked about nominations for vice council chairman, and he was quite pained that we missed that a, a unique opportunity to have a woman become a vice council chair this year. Now, these are the criteria that are in the SP operating guidelines as of today. Okay, and if you look at them one to five, I can easily punch holes in all of them. Okay, the first one says you must be an SP member in good standing and registered in any section in Nigeria. Fair enough, right? But how do you de determine somebody who is registered in any section in Nigeria? If you go to the SP website, you punch somebody's name, you can actually see people who are, you know, affiliated to sections in Nigeria, but they're not even living geographically in Nigeria to start with, right? Number two says that you need to be a section director who has been to serve as a section officer. We need to tell the story as it is, because it, what if you're a section director who was never a section chairman? Is that what the council is talking about here? So I'm encouraging the council that maybe it might be time for us to start revisiting some of these uh, 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 criteria so that we do not necessarily disenfranchise people who are qualified in terms of ability to serve and to deliver on the mandate of SP membership, you know, in terms of uh, being uh, the leader uh, at, the, at the head of affairs in SP. They talk about having to participate in sexual and council activities for two years in the last five years. I mean, we have women who, because of maybe work postings or cross postings, they've had to travel out of Nigeria and they're not able to function actively in SP Nigeria council activities you know, within that five-year period. So I think some of these things, maybe you want to even expand, extend it to 10 years, so that when those people come back, they still are in position. And we have quite a number of such women who are in diaspora today, and they have actually committed a lifetime of service prior to that, prior to going across posting to SP. So some of these women, it's not fair on them for us to just knock them up because of a criteria that uh, appears to be subjective rather than objective. And then you're talking about having support from these companies applicable. Okay, what kind of support are we talking about? Must it be documented? If so, let us put it there. And then you're talking about high industry profile and track record of commitment to SPE. What do we, how do we define industry profile, right? A trainee field engineer who just got hired in the industry today, he's an industry person. He has a profile in the industry. And I think it is high enough. Somebody who is delivering service for his company, working for his company. So we need to be very clear on some of these things. But I noticed that that last criteria appears to constantly 
edge out a lot of qualified individuals, both male and female, actually. And in recent times, probably has egged out one or two women from having the opportunity to become uh, vice council chair nominees. So the point I'm trying to focus on here is that at the bedrock of what we do in SP Nigeria is volunteerism. And it starts right from the chapters to the sections, to the nice communities and to the council. We need to get people to volunteer, you know, at the level of these different structures, you know, because in, over time, maybe the, the, the wisdom of those that drafted those criteria that was in the preceding slide was based on trying to bring out people who understood the inner workings of SPE, people who have walked through the ranks and all of that. So volunteerism, actually, I mean, I heard that in section 103, the chairman said a lady was nominated into the board, but she declined. Why did she decline? We don't know, right? So we need to encourage and push the spirit of uh, volunteerism across all of these structures. And of course, the BOT will be there to provide care and guidance as and when necessary. Now, this slide, uh, which probably going to be my last slide, which for me is a recommended way forward, which I think is the question that Stella asked me to answer directly. Now, in my own opinion, SP Nigeria Council should, as a matter of urgency, start through the sections to track volunteer record of their members, you know, so that a lot of the work that our people are doing, the chairman of SP 103 just said it now that a lot of these ladies are on fire. They are working, you know, but how do we quantify or, you know, and categorize the work they are doing in terms of records? We need to be able to have that, you know, uh, ticked off the box immediately. Second point, there is a need for urgent affirmative action on the part of SP Nigerian Action uh, Council. And by, what, by that, I mean that we need to develop defined set of ensure gender diversity and inclusion in every aspect of our programs, activities, and leadership. So we need to work at all. It's not just to wish this thing, you know, because we can finish up here now, and that's it. We had a lovely, robust conversation, and that's the end of it. But I'm encouraging the council to develop a set of policy that is going to provide a long-term assurance that gender diversity and inclusiveness, as well as equality across all strata, are carried out across all aspects of our programs. The second point under this is that we need to put in place structures that will not disenfranchise any member on the basis of gender, one, on the basis of affiliation, maybe the person is working for this kind of company or that kind of company, or no, no affiliation at all. For the record, there has been an SP international president who did not have a company. He wasn't working for any company, and he was president in the last, within the last 10 years. You know, I can't remember his name, but indeed there was. So we shouldn't disenfranchise such people from volunteering and from, from offering service. And of course, we shouldn't disenfranchise people based on the section they come from. All sections are equal as far as the council is concerned. And of course, any other demography that we want to look at. Now, the third point I want to advocate for is that beginning now, there must be a mandatory appointment, right, of deserving industry leaders into the SP Nigeria Board of Trustees. Now, for those that might not know, usually every council chairman wants to complete a tenure, you automatically become a trustee. You are drafted into the Board of Trustees. But then, discretionarily, the chairman of the Board of Trustees can propose to the trustees to appoint a deserving member within the industry and recommend him to become a trustee. So the Board of Trustees we have today in SP Nigeria Council, they are not all, they were not all SP Nigeria Council chair persons, as it were. Some of them were appointed through this means. So what I'm advocating for here is that in every three-year council, in other words, within the tenure of any BOT chairman, we need to appoint three people, right, within that uh, cycle. And two of them must mandatorily be females. Right now, we have only one female BOT, uh, BOT uh, uh, trustee, as it were. And that, I, think, I don't think is good enough because we need people in the trustee that can push the agenda and push the narrative for our women, okay? And finally, perhaps this is probably the most important one, we need to set a target here, right? That we're gonna have the first female chairperson of SB Nigeria Council. And for this to happen, what it means is that all the nominees during that particular year, all the candidates have all got to be females, right? So whether we like it or not, it's, we have to decide today, and I'm speaking directly to the council. So section 103, take this message over to council. I know the chairman is a member of council. Take this message to the council and let the council know that we need to set a target here. It could be next year, it could be the year after, whatever it is, but not exceeding the next three years. 
Product three years is even too far fetched, you know. But we need to decide on a particular year where we're going to have the first female chairperson of SPE Nigeria Council. And on this note, I want to uh, thank all our women volunteers. There are a lot of them, apart from the lady that Prof continually mentioned throughout uh, his speech. I know a lot of them, even on this panel, I have Amina there, I have Chinaya there. There are a lot of them, Caroline in Wari, Mboji in Benin, uh, yes, Chinere will be Chinere will be in Benin as well. Rita is in diaspora. Amen. These are people that have done a lot for SP Nigeria Council. Shalai Robinson, who put this program together, is there. Ogenero in total for you, Madam Madam Fogotina. Ogo Efia, Mandali Numo. Stella, our moderator. And of course, Oyinye in Port Harcourt. These are all women who not just talk their work, but they are people who have been able to, you know, push the cause of SP through service and sincere volunteerism over the last few years. I know there's quite a number of them that are still not mentioned, but these are those that I can remember uh, really at this point in time. So on this note, I will, uh, I will uh, pause uh, and uh, allow uh, Stella to continue the rest of the deliberations. Thank you very much. So before you go, Debo, I would yeah. like you to um, talk about section 103. We want our, first, our second female section chair. What are you going to do about it? Because I know you're a section director, so you're in the meetings. But, you know, section 103 is... Uh, <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yeah, we, we've, we've, we've had... The, we've had um, um, I hope I can, you can hear me. My correct connection seems to be... Okay. We've had a female um, uh, section chairperson in the past. I think... Uh, Bola, in yeah. 2012, right? And uh, since then, we've not had anyone, okay? Okay. Uh, I think we can do a lot better than that. Now, I, I, without without going into too much detail, you know, section 103, Port Harcourt, you know, we've, we've always had, you know, there's a few turbulent seasons, let me put it that way. You know, which I think I just go back to I remember that we, we might have had issues at that time that people were no longer considering looking at women or whatever it is. Now, I always believe that the best way to deal with the problem is not to run away from the problem, okay? If you have a child that does not know how to swim, right? The best solution is not to keep that child in the swimming pool. Take that child to the swimming pool so that child can learn how to swim. I said it many years ago in council. I said, there was a year we had SP in Nigeria, uh, NICE in Calabar, mm -hmm. Calabar right? And because it was, you know, it all went, there were a lot of issues, power issues here and there. They said, we must not go back there. Did they, everybody ran back to Abuja the following year. I said, if we are taking a decision to make sure a year ahead of the next year that we're going to retain Calabar and address the issues, because Tinapa was built to post, and they have an expo center, almost like being in a section of OTC, for those of you that remember the place. So what I'm trying to say here is that whenever we have this Living issues, you know, within the section, and I'm speaking in section 103, right? We shouldn't use it as an excuse to run away from the issue. So we should be bold enough, right, at this point in time, to, to try out our women. In fact, I'm not saying try it out. Try, I, I take that back because it's not very respectful. We need to be able to be bold enough to put our women there to run their affairs, right? Even if possible, we can have a woman program chair and a woman uh, chairperson at the same time, back to back. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing that prevents us from doing that. And I think. This has to do with a lot of consultation. We, 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 we reach a kind of a consensus and we communicate, you know, some of these uh, findings within the within the sections uh, community. And I want to charge the current board to start thinking along those lines because you have the ladies, you have the firepower within your section, right, to be able to deliver on this. And I've, I've been a section chairman before, and I've seen the qualities of people that are within the section today in terms of the women. And I see future chairperson or Japanese material staring at me all of the time. So please don't be afraid to take that leap, right? And, and I, it's, it's not us, our section directors, that will make it for you, right? But within the board, you go ahead, come back to us with 10 options of women and say, oh, we need only one person. Then we're going to be very happy to help you at that point in time. Thank you. And so Debo, one more question, simple yes or no. Do you have any lady that you're sponsoring? Yes or no? I, I nominated a lady for the for the vice council chairman last uh, the one that just 
the election I just concluded. I nominated okay. the lady. So you can say I sponsored the lady, yes. Mm -hmm. So we have um, questions in the chat box and um, the first set of questions will go to Professor Lederai. So Prof, can you put on your video so we can see you? We're coming back to you. We have some tough questions. See ya. Can someone confirm if Prof is still here? I'm there. Okay, thank you, sir. We have two and a half questions. How many women were part of the SPE Nigeria Council Vice Council Chair Nomination Committee? Because if we had male, two guy, people that had equal votes, perhaps it's because it was a male-dominated council committee. That's why we went me? with the guy. Yes. Hello. And yes, we can hear you. Is that you, Prof? Yes. Can, you hear, can you hear you, sir? Yes. Okay. No, I'm not a part of the nominating committee, so I wouldn't know. But let me speak to, to that. Uh, I think, and uh, usually I try not to give myself credit because I have a private conversation or public conversation with Chikese, uh MD. I think something is faulty with respect to the concept of nomination committee that we have in the Nigerian Council. I stood against the rotational of here on a section by on a section by section basis. My position was somehow modulated, in my opinion. And that's some of the reasons we still have continued to have this problem. We need to understand what nominating committee is. All this idea of voting or not voting. Is biased. And what I would suggest we do going forward is to rewrite the concept of nominating committee. If you read the conversation, you will see that how did the current MD for Walter Smith became the chairman? If you look at all the criteria that they put there, is what I call a creation of barrier to entry. Because some of the people know who they want the next first year to be. And we need to rewrite that nominating process. The nominating committee don't vote. I can give you an example. I'm sitting right now on the nominating committee for the president of 2023, the African regional director, and the technical director going to the board. The nominating committee look at the candidates and the chair is the one that presents the candidates, not this voting and doing weighted or no weighted. That will always be skewed towards who some people that talk to themselves behind wanted to be the chair. Having said that, I don't want a woman chair by quota because people will be saying behind the scene. And listen, I'm a black man who lived in the US for many years. And no matter how competent I am, people will say I got the job because I'm black. You don't want that for a chairwoman. You want a chairwoman who is transformational. And that's the reason why she got the job. And that's why it begins with sponsorship. It begins with mentorship and sponsorship. I mean, if not because of the voting team, the nomination process for the vice chairperson to be this year, because she has sponsorship. And by the way, and you guys forgive me because I speak too much. If I see the current chair of uh, the vice chair for SPE on the road, I'm not sure I recognize him. And I've been in SPE in Nigeria for 40 years. Do, do you understand what I just told you? Yes, sir. If I see the current vice chair council on the road, I may not recognize him. And there are many people who did not recognize him. I'm not saying he's not competent. 
So the nominating committee must change their structure. Sorry, professors, the answer question is too long. Forgive me. <laughs> no, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Please, um, one more question. And after that, Chikeze Wosu, please, I would like you to unmute and just speak to us for like two minutes. I know you've been typing in questions, but um, we also want to hear from you. Prof, um, as um, Debo alluded, and I'm going to put it out here, some of us feel that the women in SPE are punished for the mistakes of others. So there was a year we had a conference chair that maybe some people felt didn't do so well. And because of that, the next year conference chair lost her position. They made up their rules and barriers again. And since then, it's been difficult to get women into higher... Okay, we've had a female conference chair since then, but it's just been one person. Meanwhile, there are so many people that are qualified. Do you see this as something that is prevalent in SPE or was that a one-off, even though a lot of us feel otherwise? No, I think it's a one-off. And that's some of the problem that we, that are very supportive of women, must be careful of. It's, a, it's called transactional leaders. I'm not going to mention it. There was a woman leader in Shell. I don't mention him, so I won't be liable. Who saw another woman? An accelerated her to a level of leadership to the point that that leadership position catapulted her to become another national leader. And she ended up being a disaster. So I don't want this idea of saying, oh, I just want a woman and I must catapult her. No, just like I don't want a black man. I just want to fill a quota. So for me, and I mentioned that I wish some of these criteria are revised. That's why I thought that we have a nomination process not saying that the chair must come from Port Harcourt, you must come from Wari, you must come to Benin. And indirectly, we are indirectly coming back to that type of process. The nominating committee will be the one to identify those qualities and put the name forward. Instead of all of this scheming voting that they've done so many years in a row that is sending up, not giving us the type of leadership that we needed. Please don't get me wrong. I've always supported the final result. But the time is now to not create rules that will be skilled towards some of these people who think that because they are men, they must be the one to win the nomination process for leadership position. Yes, a bad egg out of 24 eggs, that's all the old crate. And that's why all of the women that are volunteering now cannot be the leader when their time comes. So they too must find the most competent among them and put them against a man and let that woman defeat the woman, just like all the girls are getting first position when, when, when you compete with them. So don't let us cauterize. Mm -hmm. Let us mentor one and sponsor that one. Yes, and you two, I'm not going to say what is in my mind. You must listen to those who want to sponsor you. Don't, 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 you know, it, it, it's a competition, whether you like it or not. The only thing you are doing is that you are co-op, we call it co-opetition. You cooperate, but you compete. Honestly, let somebody mentor you and is willing to sponsor you, listen, especially if that person is not a transactional leader. Okay, thank thank you. you very much, Prof. Thank you very much, Prof. Chikeze, are you ready? Yes, I'm absolutely ready. Yes, so two and, minutes. And, Please, and even if, yeah. if you held this- Sorry, let me just quickly say session. something. Let me quickly say ahead. something. Madam, you can sponsor men too, not, not the other way around. Even ladies can sponsor men and mentor men. 
I just thought I need to put that in. It's not just about sponsoring a woman. A woman can sponsor a man as well. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Oh, thank, thank you, Prof. Uh, prof. Yeah. So um, I was going to say that if we had set this up at 12 midnight and I was in Iceland, I would have dialed it. Um, let me tell you, and, and I'm, a, I'm a disruptor, if anybody knows me. Mm -hmm. And let me read something to you before I even start, because I've been, you know, typing and, you know, wondering why we're still having this conversation. I'll read this from you from, I think it's Martin Luther King. One has not only a legal, but a moral responsibility to obey just laws. Conversely, one has a moral responsibility to disobey on just laws. The bylaws that have been set up by SP in Nigerian Council for the nomination of the vice council chair are unjust laws. Let me state that categorically. And have been put in place to help um, men succeed themselves. Now, one of the things that amazes me the most, if somebody can put up those five criteria that they use to make that judgment, because I've been typing about those five criteria, let it add into my two minutes. Somebody can just show it. Debo, what you showed. Debo, please, can you share your screen again? Thank you, sir. Yes, go back to the criteria. Okay, an SP member in good standing and registered in any section in Nigeria. Okay, I was registered in section 61. A section director who has previously served as a section officer. I was not a section director of any section, but I was immediately put in, I think, as a section director in Lagos. I'm being honest, so that people understand this. Must have participated in section and council activities for two years in the last five years. Who knew me? There's nobody that saw me participating actively in any section and council activities. Must have support from his or her company as applicable. Oh, that's easy must have high industry profile and track record of commitment to SPE. I had high industry profile, I think, but track record of commitment. I was an e-mentor, SP International, and that was just about it. So it was an intentional choice to make me vice council chairman. And I say that. And actually, when I came in as vice council chairman, there were a lot of the old boys network who felt, how did this happen? And basically, it was even at the end of my tenure that some of them came to me and said, wow, there were people that were praying that you would fail so that they can come and point out that you can't go and get an external party to come and be SP Nigerian Council chairman. These were people that came to me and said to me, it's surprising that you succeeded because there were many people who were praying for your failure. So let me explain why I'm saying this. When men want to be intentional, they don't pay any attention to so-called cultural issues. When people say cultural issues, I've been arguing that this is absolute nonsense. You know, when uh, people talk about cultural issues, every single individual has a different culture. So what cultural issue are we talking about? And I want them named so I can actually challenge them. So not today, but in the course of this conversation, name them. Midnight meetings, who is holding midnight meetings? I never held any midnight meetings with anybody apart from at the nice, where everybody was out of their homes. If anybody can name one single midnight meeting that I held with anybody, I'd be very happy to take them on. Yeah? Meetings at uncomfortable places, never held it with anybody. At least most of my meetings were virtual even at that time. So, and they say, um, you know, uh, uh, women should put themselves out there. <laughs> I didn't put myself out for vice council chair. It was an intentional selection. People reached out and said, it's time you come and help and support SPE Nigerian Council. That is how I got it. So there was nothing, nothing about my putting myself forward. So why do you demand that of women to put themselves forward? Why is that a, why is that a demand? So name any of these cultural issues that we keep ramping up. But I keep telling people that these are simple things that men put in place to find an excuse so that they would not be called, um, what, what, what do they call them? I don't know whether I call them chauvinists. That's what they are. So when I hear people talking about oh, cultural issues, no cultural issues, this I say, sorry, give yourself an excuse. And the funny thing is that women are imbibing this thing. 
Uncle Man also mentioned to you that there are cultural issues within Nigeria. Uh, um, Okonjo Iwal wears an African attire. What is more cultural than that? A woman, a, a, a tie. She wears a hair tie. Yeah, what's more cultural than that? But she is, you know, a DJ of the WTO. Who stopped her? Did she have to start wearing a business suits or anything like that? Yeah, she has a family, she has children. So I'm saying, I am going to keep the men in SP Nigerian Council uncomfortable, uncomfortable until they know that there is intention. Is There's nothing about quota. There's nothing about, um, you know, uh, tokenism. Yeah, they make an intentional choice that the next vice council chairman, the next vice council chairman, or chairperson or chairwoman will be a woman. Make that intentional. That is the discomfort I'm going to create. So you can give all sorts of excuses. The men, you can have as many seminars as you want. Yeah. The most important thing is that when you want to be intentional, you know what to do. When you want to disobey these rules, bylaws and these rules, you've done it. You did it in my case. You disobeyed every single one of them just to get me in as, as vice council chair. So if you want to disobey them, you will disobey them. But if you don't want to, you can keep giving yourself excuses. I rest. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Chikeze, it's always a pleasure to listen to you. Between you and Prof, we are sure that we have two allies that will be speaking on our behalf at council and BO team meetings. So back to our panelists. Joe Wakwe, I see you. I see your hands and I will come to you. We will take one or two words from you. And then I need to apologize to our audience. I know we said five to seven, but the conversation is... It's, I don't think we can round it up here. So please, I crave your indulgence. I'm greedy. We are going to take like 30 minutes more of your time. So if you can stay with us, please stay with us. Our panelists, we crave your indulgence. I know you might have some events or plans. But now I'm going to pit our panelists against each other. Chine, what do you have to say to Bola on this issue? What advice do you have for him? What tears do you want to give him? He's the current um, section chair of section 103. He has told us that he's doing his best, but do you think he can do better? What do you want him to do more? Thank you, um, Stella. I think we really need to be very, very deliberate. Just like um, Chik, as they said, if we want it to happen, it will happen. There's this, you know, it has become a cliche, but it happens. You know, we'll, we'll always say unconscious bias and all that. You know, when you see a woman that a, a woman has some kind of um, some hurdles to even overcome for the, uh, against the men because there's this double bind, and the double bind, you know, looks at a situation where a woman tries to be assertive and aggressive, and people say, "Oh, she's too aggressive," and if she decides to be, you know, um, to be sensitive, they'll say she's weak, you know. So she has to like overcome all that just to be able to prove a point. So that unconscious bias is there. And a lot of studies have shown this. Even um, Kellogg's study went to Harvard, for example, they went to, they did a study that found out that in schools everywhere, women do very well. 56 or 55% of the people in school are women, they excel. And they don't have barriers getting to the place of work and they do very well. but the challenge comes when they now when they start you know climbing the leadership um, ladder. This unconscious bias starts coming in, and you now find out that after ten years, most of them kind of quit. And you know what? According to the study, they quit not because they start having children or because they have families. They quit out of frustration. So you can imagine, for example, SPE that is supposed to be um, people volunteer to do things, people are not paid you know, to do this, to carry out this task. And you see women that are very, very competent. You know, I really marvel when I see, I mean, I, I see what you do, Stella. You know, I, I marvel when I see all the energy and all that. But when it comes to you know, selecting very key positions, they are kind of displaced to just see, you know. So what happens is that over time, you can actually get discouraged and just feel, okay, there's really nothing here for me. Maybe they feel I'm not good enough and all that. And, and you, 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 you know, that just, you know, discourages a lot of people. So what I would, for, for Bola, what I would say is what we need are transformational leaders, just like Prof said, that would inspire, encourage, and promote. 
I've seen that a lot in, <laughs> I've seen that a lot in Chikizemos, really. You know, there are leaders that, let me give you some personal experiences that I saw, you know, being in Norway and being in Australia. In Norway, they, I, I think their, their president is even a woman, right? In Norway, that, it, it was Norway that I first saw that they have so much, you know, made women to understand that they can do anything. There are no biases that. I realized that when I was having my master's degree, while we were doing reservoir engineering, you know, reservoir engineers, you know, at the end of the day, you sit in the office and all that. Tell you something, all the Norwegian girls, and there were lots of them, all the Norwegian girls were drillers. They were drillers. And that comes from a society where people, where the leaders have actually inspired, have motivated, have encouraged. You know, when you do that, if you do that in SPE, for example, you see how women will be soaring. And they're soaring already with all the barriers. They're already soaring. Another place that I've seen that is in Australia. I see most, almost all the girls are construction workers. Construction workers. You know, when you go to a construction site, you see them, ladies, they're making a whole lot of money and they're happy doing what they're doing. I saw that in Norway and I saw that in Australia. And these are societies that have, you know, given women that opportunity. That's, I shouldn't even say opportunity, that have removed those barriers, those unconscious bi uh, biases, you know, that we still carry. You know, we say a lot of things like cultural. Um, yes, it was mentioned that some, maybe 50% of women were, you know, selected for Port Harcourt and one declined. She could have declined for, a man could have as well declined and nobody will read meaning in, into it. But the moment a woman declines, ah, it's like, hey, we told you now that. No, it shouldn't be. We all have personal choices. We all have personal preferences. It, it, two men, more men can even decline. Nobody will make issues out of it. You know, so what I want is, it's not just paying lip service or ticking the box. You know, let me tell you something else again that shocked me. Harvard also carried out a study that, you know, said that noticed that women in the past, you know, there was this clear rejection, you know, it was very clear. But these days, the rejection comes or the biases come in a way that are very subtle. And that is even more damaging. So you might actually think that you are doing a lot, you are promoting, but in some unconscious things that, you know, in this kind of unconscious biases that you, you know, people do. You kind of, we're very sensitive beings at, at, as well. You, you pass messages across that, you know, show that, okay, yes, you are doing this, but somehow you are promoting the men. In, in fact, in, even in terms of the mentorship and sponsorship, again, there was something that was pointed out that men kind of want to sponsor people that remind them of themselves when they were younger. So they naturally just pick men to sponsor leaving the women to suffer because really like Prof rightly um, pointed out and acknowledged, if you don't have mentors, if you don't have sponsors, there's little, there's really nothing you can do, no matter how hardworking, no matter how assertive, no matter how you have many times you raise your hand and say, oh, I want to be a leader like Bola said, if you don't have sponsors, then really nothing will happen. So those, I would, I would want to see, you know, uh, Bola really do that, not just like preaching it or, you know, ticking the box, like be very deliberate about those. Thank you. You have an opportunity to respond, but as you're responding, also address this fact. Section 103 was the section that had a female chairperson and maybe things didn't go as well and we feel we are being punished for the sins of our ancestor. I know you're passionate about women. I worked under you. In fact, I think you were the one that's... Okay, you were not the one, but you were the first person I worked under in SPE. Are you carrying along your other male colleagues? Because you step down, we have a new council chair, and he just throws away that list you made and bring back his own list. We know there are a list of young men that have been told that they will be section chair, and which year they will be the section chair. Over to you. Ah, you are muted. Please unmute. So, uh, thank you, Stella, for thank you, Stella, for for this uh, point. Um, so, and thank you very much, uh, Chinaya, for the points you've made. 
Okay, uh, aside working in France, which uh, they are first world country, I want to talk very quickly uh, to portray this point of a third world country like Nigeria. So I worked in Thailand for about two years. And I can tell you, it's my friend, that I was in a lead working with us offshores, from the field engineers to construction, everything. And you know, they have long S, and you know, we are not really used to that in Nigeria having ladies, very long S. So like we're going for lunch together, I really like, you know, they are just, and when they get into their work, they are extremely professional. So I've seen this happen more than, if you get to the airport in Thailand, from the airport, you will know this is a ladies country. All the managers at the airport from there, you will know more than 70%. And it's in the statistics, you can check it. So they were intentional about the policies to make women there, not only to make the, the most women, the most kind of gender in uh, Thailand also, ladies. So we have to also start from there. Okay, um, but I would like to go straight uh, to some of the actions I'm thinking about, okay, for section 103. So when I look at the bill for section 103, I'm very sorry, it's like almost rubbish for me. And the first thing I did in September was to constitute a committee straight away to review this. I put a lady, three ladies, three guys. So that's six of them. And then we have been till now, we are still collating comments from people. And I've started pushing, please look at this section, look at this section. And I can tell you, I have the figures of, in terms of gender, I'm talking of the input of, from the genders. It is very rare, very difficult also to get to, to, to put down their minds out there. So the, the, the uh, prof have already said it that we need to be intentional also about it, but we are not talking of only men to be intentional. We also want our women to get it out. I want this. This is what we should have in sector 103. Let's put it down, it's by law. We do it and everybody signs it and that's what it should be. But so we need also, we want to nice things. We need, Let's be sincere, really a man that will be doing this, support structure of ladies. And that is why we have the win. Coming to talk about this, when uh, Marshall Lawrence brought out this, I cried a little bit about it and I said, wait, are we gonna say intentionally or not intentionally, we need a woman chair? And then she started explaining and I saw the point from what she's explaining. In fact, we talked for more than five minutes on this. And, and I said, yeah, I think we should go for this. And more of this. Women need support structures also for women. So having said that, one of the actions that I also have in mind that I put also in the bylaw is each year for us to have at least three directors nominated for section one. And that's what I put there, that's my own opinion, that's my own. And I said, at least there must be a lady. This is what I put there. So some of these are intentional things so that we can have posterity, so that we can not just by, but we can have it the continuity. So we have to support certain things that we stay, have a staying power. So another thing also is that if you don't know, if you are still not a director of a section, just as uh, Mr. Zia said, so you will want to aspire to be a chair so that you be a director. For me, that's another fault in our, in our bylaws, in our system. Okay, you can nominate people that they have good standing to be directors. There's no need waiting until the person becomes a chair. We have so many qualified ladies. I was going to be waiting for, no, they are even, uh, they will be 60 years before it gets to their turn, even if you're early. So let's be frank about these things. Okay, so we have to look deeply in the systems, which one of them is the bylaws, the guidelines we are running, running with in the sections. So um, uh, as you have asked, uh, we have uh, a lady that was in 2012, that was our second chair. Okay. And after that, we don't have any more. And I will tell you, we still have since year 2000, I've been seeing 
more than 70 percent, 75 percent of the guys that were chairman, so to speak, I still see a lot of the involvement in SP. What I want to say is that being a council chair, being a IRB, SP International does not really mean anything. It doesn't mean years I've achieved, and I go. Away. So it is very easy. One of my friends said, volunteering is not that you have a lot of time, it's because you have the heart. So let's also encourage people, we'll get to this question and we leave. You can see it is very clear, probably it's more than for something years uh, in, in this. They still stay, they still support. This is the only way we can have mentorship. This is the only way we can have people that advocate younger ones. So when the board came in last year for Section 103, we had someone that paid even up. He just from school. It's already a YP for me. She indicated interest. We supported her, even though I started hearing a lot of things. I don't care. As per the bylaw, he's qualified. And they said they are going to do, I was hearing they are going to write a petition. Write the petition. Let's see where it will go. So we have, as leaders also, we have to stay action. We have to, not just the, the, the supporting structure, we have to really put our effort, put ourselves on the line to ensure things like this happen. So it is not a wishful thing. We have to intentionally put our action and ourselves on the line to make it happen. I'm very proud of the lead, especially from Sector 103. They are doing so great, even from the YPs and even from all the cadres that we have presented. And I'm very, very sure I have said it and I've said it many times that it's not just more than three years we are going to have a section chair because don't forget the support structure is also another structure we have that is a bin. You have to start from deputy program chair, program chair, and then because before you become a chair. So that is three years in a row. So it, the support structure also is another problem that we have to look at. So for me, so uh, having said this, uh, I will just to recognize what Prof said again. I, I want to reiterate that. He says that he doesn't want a woman by quota. So when we are advocating, when we are supporting, let's ensure it's a transformational leader. No, we don't have a problem with men when it gets to men, uh, even though it's not or it's a man, I think they just go. So that is one of the problems we have in the society. If it's a woman, then I uh, think we start looking if he's doing well or not. Man, we don't look. He just he will just do his uh, leadership and he leaves and nobody say anything. So also, I will want this kind of um, seminar or this kind of uh, workshop. Let's continue to have it. Let's continue to talk about this. And let's continue to put the support structures in place. That is the only way any wishful thinker will not just come one day and just say, all these are rubbish. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So my next will be um, Amina. I think uh, Debo is back. Debo, confirm, are you back? That's correct. I'm very much here. Yes. So Amina, um, you said you've, you've, in our private discussions and also here, you've talked about how you've enjoyed some sponsorship and mentorship, especially from our regional director that's been here and from other people. What would you have to say to Debo about that? I know he said... He, when I asked him that question about sponsorship, he dodged it one kind. He said, I was the one that sponsored somebody last year or one year ago. He couldn't come out and say yes or no. What do you have to say to him about that? What challenge are you giving him? Because even though he won't, he's been trying to sneak out and say he's just a director, he's not a, a board member. We know the people that make things happen in section 103. So what challenge do you have for him in terms of building up more female leaders for us in section 103 and Nigerian council? Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, well, to be fair to Debo, yeah, he has tried. He has, um, from the um, chat that he, sh he shared with us, he had more females when he was um, the council chair. But a lot needs to be done. You know, that he has to openly sponsor, you know, show us that he is sponsoring somebody and then rally everybody that he can rally around him to make sure that that is sponsored and his mentee 
makes it to the top. I think that's I think that is what this is about because all those rules, the five rules that like um, you know what um Mr. Chiki Ezese was actually an eye-opener. I didn't I didn't even know that those rules were bent for him. So that means it can be done again. But then we're not asking for just a woman, but somebody who is competent. And we have some of them, we have them, you know, so nothing stops. You know, the way that deliberately Mr. TKV was brought in because he had something to offer. I'm sure that there are a lot of women that have a lot to offer that Debo can sponsor and push until they succeed. Thank you very okay, so much. Debo, let's have your response. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, thanks for the, for the kind words, which obviously puts a lot of pressure on me, you know. But uh, I, I think, um, I'm always willing, you see, SPE for me is, uh, is an opportunity. In fact, what I see in SPE most of the time is it's, it's, it's an avenue to develop and to grow leaders, right? And for every single task that any volunteer does in SPE is an opportunity to demonstrate leadership traits, qualities, and abilities. And that for me is what endears me to SPE. And that is why Right from when I was a member of committees and when I became a committee chair myself, and I've chaired quite a number of committees in my time, you know, I've always encouraged uh, women, you know, to, to be members of committees. I remember when I was, uh, my first committee chair role was as uh, exhibition chair, and I was exhibition chair for two, two consecutive years, right? And I remember my second year, I, I had Ogo uh, Efion, you know, she was a member of the committee, and she was actually, I, I retained her from the last year. You know, but this time around, she gave me a shortcut that she was on short-term assignments in Houston. You know, so I still had about uh, four or five other men in the committee at the time. But I will tell you that, or uh, where well, was, that's why the fact that she was in Houston. She was working for me remotely in the committee, and she was the most effective, uh, um, what do you call it, a performer in the team. To the extent that when I was now leaving that position after two years, I actually wanted her to take away from me. You know, but at the time, my, my boss in my day job was the council chairman. He overruled and he put a man there to chair the committee. And I tell you one thing, that man did that job for Right? So at that time, Ogo eased into the role and she did it for two effective years. After her, and I think it was a Ogo, sorry, it was a Ugochi. And after Ugochi, it was Bola. I believe. And you know, these women have taken the exhibition. When I thought I was a superstar back in the day, they have taken it even to the next level. Yeah, you understand? So I see that when you empower women, right, they can always perform, you know, statistically even a lot better than men. However, you know, the point that needs to be made, I will align what Prof said, is that it is not a matter of woman for woman's sake, right? It is, it, it, it is not a quota system kind of arrangement. We are bringing the most qualified women. And that is what happens in the, in, the, in the realms of affirmative action. You have your policies, right, to guarantee fairness. However, you don't want to shortchange on capabilities. In South Africa, you know, when they created this black economic empowerment, where you prioritize a black man over a white skinned individual and over a colored person, right? At some point, they had to stop and hey, hey, what's happening? They were hiring pilots in South African Airways who were not so, so competent, but just because they were Blacks. So we had to rethink it and said, you know what? You have to be at the same level of educational qualification, compare apples with apples, so that if you are at par in qualification, then they will pick the Black guy before they pick the white guy. That is what we're talking about here. So the women also need to demonstrate that they have what it takes. It is not just out of wishful thinking. And that is why, in as much as I am advocating that this council should decide that maybe it is next year, the vice council chair must be a woman. Then we need to bring a pool of highly competent and qualified women so that it will make the decision difficult for us to even take. You know, we want to choose or elect that person, not just somebody that will just come there on the platter because she has been the one making noise and advocating and demonstrating desire. You know, so the nominating committee which I, by the way, I think should be revamped because right now it is just the five section chairman, the current council chair and the middle past council chair, seven of them, seven wise men, so to speak, right? That's up to elect these people. We need to have a nomination committee akin to what happens in uh, SP International 
so that the nomination committee is going to look within the SPE Nigeria uh, volunteer space and pick out people who they deem qualified enough. So we have a problem in our hands. Maybe we have five women, five solid women that we can choose from, not just uh, because uh, one person is shouting, let us, okay, let us give this person. No, we want a challenge so that we can bring out the best in terms of quality and ability, you know, rather than leaving it in the hands of uh, uh, some institutionalized uh, structure, as it were, you know. So the nomination committee is going to, they're going to be there, almost invisible to the rest of the SP membership. They are doing their job quietly. At the end of the day, when the time comes, they now move it to the selection committee and they now and pick who they think or they deem is right. But as long as it's a woman, but demonstrate that such a woman must come from a carefully selected pool of other women, right? And you must demonstrate that for your qualification and your service, uh, service record of volunteerism. Thank you. Thank you, Debo. Thank you, Debo. I know we are all enjoying the conversation. I'm excited here, but we need to close. And I'm going to, we're going to close up this session with call to action. People are going to give us their clear commitment of what they're going to do living here. We have so many opportunities, but because of time, I'm going to limit it to the three BOT members, Debo, Chikeze, and then Prof. Prof will close it up. When living here, leaving this meeting, we are going to have a communicate issued after this meeting. Shola is going to share it, and we're going to be handing over that communicate to Amina to take to the council. This is what we discussed in section 103. This is what we expect. But Debo, personally, what are you going to do now? One or two sentences. Well, for me, this, is, this thing has gone beyond the section 103 matter. Okay? So I'm a member of BOT, one of the youngest members of the, of the Board of Trustees. So I'm going to take it to the Board of Trustees, and I would say, as a matter of urgency, we need to determine that next year, the vice council chair has to be a woman. And let us work towards that goal post without moving it. Thank you. Chikezie. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will be totally supporting uh, in the supportive in the BOT that no single man should be put forward as a nominee for vice council chair next year. It's not a matter of uh, let's make sure that there's a woman nominee. The competition will be amongst women. Let me explain why I'm saying this. I think, you know, when I hear, you know, about not any woman, and they were sorry about this, but qualified women. There's not a single woman who has spoken on this forum that I can find more qualified than council chairman I've seen in the past. I don't know what is the qualification here. These are confident, well-spoken, well-positioned women in their district, and they can take on this mantle. So people stop talking about transformational leadership. Yeah, I know what Prof meant by that. And it did not mean that we should set a different standard for women that we set for men. There are qualified women in SP Nigerian Council. Let's stop talking about as if we're searching for them. Anyone that puts themselves forward in this forum over here are qualified. Okay? And so it's about intentional. It's intentional. Intentional is don't look at these so called rules. The rules are made by men. These uh, SP Nigerian Council rules are not part of the Bible or the Quran. They don't send down messages from God. So, you know, why, why do we keep talking about them? Yeah, they are irrelevant in my space. And whenever I see man-made rules in my organization, and people who have worked with me know that, I just bulldoze through them. I don't want to hear the rules. I want to hear what is good, what can be delivered. Yeah, and not any kind of silly rules that put, people put in place just to create hurdles or create a silence. So my word is that maybe it's this thing, we go to the council and say, we don't want any men. Don't mm -hmm. give us any men. Nomination committee as a rule. No men next time around. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And um, Prof, um, we're coming to you. You also use the opportunity to round up the section for us. You're muted, sir. Again, for the opportunity to, to, to share with you some of the materials that I've been able to get. I personally, uh, I don't think, I've been been a black man in a white society for many years, uh, I can understand when a particular group uh, seems they are being left out for what they belong. But I want to say again to everything within me that there's no glass ceiling in SPE. They are just winding path. And I'm looking for a woman who is not going to be discouraged 
accomplish something at a particular time. Why I agree with this idea of uh, putting a, a standard it must be a woman next year. I don't want whoever become the chairperson next year to be looked at as getting it because it's a woman. Luckily, we had an opportunity this year. We can follow, the, the Nigerian council can follow the same scenario that we put in place that allowed Chikize to be the vice council chair next year. Because we've gotten someone that has tested it. But I don't know if she's going to be available next year or not on a particular person. Because that same person, we have an opportunity to be presented to the, to the SPE, perhaps, as a possible uh, SPI officer. Again, that is the way this thing should be. She's not being presented because she's a woman. And that's, that's my point. She's being presented because there is the quality in her that made her selectable. I never love to get a position because I'm black. I hate it. And all my life, that's what I've had to live with in the United States. I went to California Energy Commission. I was employed because I was among the top five percentile. My friends would tell me, go, oh, yeah, because you are black. Even though it's an exam that I took and I was among the, five, the top five percentile. And that's why I'm agitating. I want a woman to compete and win despite the barrier. And that's why I said it begins with mentorship. I mean, Chiki and I spoke at length. And that's why I'm personally disappointed with those guidelines with respect to become a vice chancellor. I actually spoke to the chairman of the committee as well. Because the voting is. Skilled, and I fought it at Nigerian Council on the floor. Go and check the record. When somebody was being pushed to become, we need to, and that's what transformational leadership is. Venture, something did not happen, then we don't have a problem. Problem. We already have a candidate for next year. You, yeah. We already have a candidate who's a female for next year. And there's nothing wrong in the Nigerian Council say, wow, let's try. Again, that would depend on what happened on November 4th at the board of directors meeting. I am Professor E for she. Yay. <laughs> Whoever the she is. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. As an individual, you don't have a single say if it has to be a team decision. That's why everybody needs a sponsor. Everybody. Even my DIMD as a sponsor. She Obama. Obama had a sponsor behind the scene. That's why he was able to defeat Clinton, who owns the Democratic Party. Everybody needs a sponsor. Ron, who was your sponsor? I have, I have a, who is my sponsor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my sponsor is the Lord God Almighty. I've always oh. got anything I desire to have. <laughs> yeah. All right. Prof, well, thank, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all our speakers. Thank you to all our panelists. This has been a very invigorating discussion. It has not ended. The chat box is on fire. People are just dropping points. Chikeze is speaking here. He's speaking in the chat box. People are, he's giving it, you know, it just, it's coming hot, 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 hot. We are going to pack everything together in a community and we are taking this discussion back to the Nigerian Council. So we expect the conversations to start there. I'll be handing over to Shola Robinson to give the vote of thanks and 
take us to we just have like 15 minutes left so please if you can be Stella, please i have one Stella, question Stella, Stella, just i have comments, one question yeah. amina hello okay chicken say go I, I mean i go ahead i mean i go ahead okay. i just want no, to sir, please go ahead okay can we all commit to making sp niger council uncomfortable uncomfortable until a woman becomes vice council chair that should be part of the community make them uncomfortable yeah. I'm, 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 I've committed, sir. If you have committed, raise your hand. Though. Everybody raise your hand. They boy, you're, they boy, you're not raising your hand. No, my Our goes. women Follow are right. My, my screen yeah. goes. We have committed, sir. All right. We are I'm committed. Like yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, the talk is about somebody sponsoring somebody, identifying some. Can somebody get a mentor by himself or a sponsor? I mean, somebody to approach. I'm addressing this question to Prof and uh, Mr. Chikezie. Can somebody identify a sponsor or a mentor and reach out? Yes. I say yes. If you don't find us, we'll find you. <laughs> no, our own is settled now. You're my mentor already. I'm, I'm asking on behalf of. <laughs> I'm asking on behalf of others. <laughs> well, well, I, I think, I think, uh, in all honesty, uh, even though MD does not want me to talk about cultural setting, whether we like it or not, we have we have a culture that is inherent in us. Listen, I never called my boss in LSU by the first name throughout the 27 years that we were together. And yet I will find people that I am older than, he's older than them. This guy was even a staff for the economic team for the president in the United States. I never went to his office and called him by his first name. I never see any Nigerian call me by my first name for five years that I was professor in Uniport. So all of those things are inherent in us. Okay, look at uh, Queen, I mean, not just now. When they ask Chikese or Amina to speak, why did Amina say, no, Chikese should speak for us? Why did Chikese tell him, go speak for us? Those are cultural issues that the women must take out of their mindset. I call it first among equal. That's what you all are in SP at your level. And until you grab, okay, of course, I got into trouble by calling the vice chancellor of the University of Port Harcourt first among equal. They told me that was not cultural. And one of the reasons why I'm in Cape Coast today is because of that first among equal that I call the Vice Chancellor of the University of Port Harcourt. In this generation, those cultural settings must be disabused if we want to go to the next level. And you are not necessarily being aggressive. Those cultural settings must not stop you from approaching a non-transactional leader to be your mentor for what you want. And people may read meaning into it. Oh, you want a sugar dad? Those are cultural settings that is making you not to do what you are supposed to do to be picked to lead. I mean, I mean, I'll give you an example. Ah, you are going to a meeting alone without your husband. She has to come with her, daughter, her son. And as a result, the son is limiting her from being able to deliver at the highest possible level. So those are issues which you must close your mind to go forward. I mean, just like me, for many years, I was the only one going to IAE meeting. How did I become the president of International Association for Energy Economics as a black person? I was shocked when I was called by a nominating committee. And that's the only way SPE can get a woman can depend on those women who look at SP chairman of the council as the way to popularize themselves. 
they will never surrender. They won't. You must break that barrier by your determination, your discipline, and your desire to become the chairperson of the SP Council of Nigeria. And it's doable. Listen, I was president for USAEE without lobbying for it. I was president for International Association for Energy Economics without lobbying for it. And I was ALD without lobby, lobbying for it. You must just have the desire to serve. Pick your mentor. Ask people to sponsor you once you make up your mind. And that's what we are doing for those that we realize are willing to serve. And you have so many of you who are willing to, to serve. Don't allow the cultural setting to stop you. If you want it, go get it, my dear. You have my support. Thank you. If you are Thank not competent, you. you don't have my support. To <laughs> yes, sir. We know that. Yes, bro. Uh, yeah. Shola, over to you. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. This room is so hot. Am I the only one feeling this heat? Wow, I want to say a big thank you to everyone here, starting with our speakers and panelists. Prof, you've always been a very big advocate for women. Thank you so much for your insightful speech. Uh, giving out more than two and a half hours of your time is a big one for us. Deba, thank you so much. You were the first person I discussed this event with and you encouraged me and agreed to be part of it. Thanks for all the women you sponsored in SP. I'm one of them. Amina, I love your passion for women on our SP family platform. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Chinaye, our women are pride. Eh? We are moving forward. Like the youth say it, we move. My council chair, you're exceptional. Thanks so much for your support. We can see all your efforts and we appreciate every one of them. And to the best moderator in the world, Stella, you kept everyone glued to their devices with those you're putting on the spot kind of questions. Thank you so much. And to Mr. Chike Zenwosu, if we have just two of you within the Nigerian council, Man, women for don't take this position. Thank you so much. We appreciate you, sir. And to everyone that took out time, data, and electricity to attend this event, thank you so much. We appreciate your attendance. And just as Stella, uh, Stella said, we ensure these two and a half hours were not wasted, right? We'll put up a communique and make sure this conversation continues till we achieve our objective. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate everyone here. Thank you so much. Over to our section chair, please. So how uh, much, uh, Mrs. Shola Robinson, for this uh, um uh, this is really appreciated, but uh, I think you have to do a part two of this. So, of course, uh, we're still having a program in March, which is uh, alongside the International Women's Day. Uh, we'll be having about three um, uh, groups, uh, like a panel groups from that um, um, uh, from that workshop. I would like one of those to still continue to talk about this issue of leadership support system for women, uh, if it's still possible at this stage. I don't know if you have finalized the program. Um, so thank you to everybody. I, I think we are a little bit overwhelmed by the support and uh, we are picked at more than uh, 90. This is incredible. And we'll continue to, to do this to support our women uh, so that uh, we can move forward, especially in the third world country. Um, I would like very quickly, just because I think we are gradually reducing, to take the pictures now. So we we'll want you to put on your videos. Uh, it will not take more than 30 seconds. Uh, so we have our team that will take the pictures. So please uh, put on your videos uh, for about 30 seconds. 
and then uh, I'll hand over back uh, to to Stella. Okay, to the uh, facilitator. Ella, we'll hand over back to you just uh, immediately after the pictures. So please put on your pictures. Start now for thirty seconds, please. How did I do this? Oh, and I... if you like, uh, according to our boss, uh, Chikis, I just want to raise up my hand that I'm in, in support to make the men uncomfortable in I my get video. Driving mode? <laughs> so that they will remember they saw my hand. <laughs> we can hey. even do the choose to challenge pose. Simeon, are you there? Sure, Simeon sure. Indian. Okay. Tell can us I put us in done. the... So, Simeon, are you done? I know it's a lot, right? <laughs> okay, so just please uh, be patient with us. I think this uh, this raising of the hand is also a part of this uh, because people are going to ask, why are you guys raising up your hand? So you need to explain <laughs> to them <laughs> why. <laughs> and they will keep on coming back to yeah. this uh, as one of the pillars of what uh, this How session represents. You're asking okay. me to make myself uncomfortable. <laughs> she can okay, make I'm myself done. uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, he's done. Okay, uh, we we we. Um, I think we should hand over to um, Ella. We hand over to you to round up. No, I think. Okay, so uh, do we have anyone to take us through the membership talk? Um, Marian, are you there? No, so I'm here. If he is here. Are you sharing anything? Okay, um, okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, just uh, for our uh, non-members that are on the platform. We have our social media handles. Uh, Simeon, you can project that. Yes, please. Um, so thank you, everyone, for this uh, great engaging session. And really, the, it, it's been hard to take uh, eyes or ears off this conversation. So uh, for membership, I mean, we cannot volunteer um, without active membership in SPE. Uh, Simeon, please, if you go ahead and, and beam it. Yeah, so um, currently we are on a very um, uh, hard membership drive considering um, the membership expired December 2020. We um, have corporate mem um, sponsors and we have individual um, sponsors. So we are driving the renewal for membership and also seeking um, creative ways uh, amid the, the pandemic and the situation um, uh, to get people, new members into section 103 and thereby into the SPE family. Um, currently we have um, over 1,400 members renewed and uh, we are looking at um, getting that in, um, up to about 1,700 by next month. Um, hopefully we would meet that target. And we call on everyone here on this call to help with that drive. Uh, you can follow our social media handles as displayed. Um, uh, give your comments, give your suggestions and uh, renew your membership and get your colleagues to also renew their memberships. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ify. Really appreciate it. Um, so, uh, Ella, are you still there? Can we yes, conclude? I am. Yes. Conclude okay. what is we have on the agenda very quickly. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, okay, great. So indeed, that's all we have on the agenda today. Thank you, thank you. We started a, a two-hour session. It has gone into three, almost three hours, and we have the same level of interest, the same level of excitement. We're grateful to everyone. Thank you, thank you. This was recorded live on YouTube, so you can go back and listen to them again so that you can motivate yourself and also your friends, your colleagues. Everyone should listen to this, and let's stir up ourselves as women and as men of SPE, there's a lot we can do. So thank you, everyone. I'll leave it here. Simeon, you can play us some music to, to just take us out into the evening. 
So thank you, everyone. Have a good Thank day. you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Well done. Thank you. Well done. Bye. Well done, Stella. Well done, everyone. Well done, Stella. Stella and Stella. Everyone on the lady in the house. Yeah. Thank you, lady. Madam A, I see you. Well hey, Imabong, how are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. All right, all right. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank thank you, you madam. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Good well, uh, to have you well, here. Uh, Potago section chair, well done. Uh, that, this, this is yeah, very good well of you. Well done. We're proud thank of you. Thank you, madam. I'm well just well like God, bro. I'm here for she, too. Well done. Yeah, so, <laughs> well, I'm here well, for she. I think we're going well, to do hashtag for she. We appreciate you. We're going to do hashtag he for she. We're doing hashtag. Hashtag yeah, he for she. That's, so. <laughs> that's a very good hashtag to follow this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for having me. Shala, well done. And the team, well, well done. done. Eli, Thank you so much. Very well done. Bye. This is the fact. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Bye. 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 Shala, great job. Well done. Thank you. Well done, Shola. Well done, Ila. Well done, Stella. Well done, Marshall. Well done, well done everyone. That's you. You're, you're, well you're super. Well done. My win committee, thank you so much. Well done, bro. <laughs> thank you. Well done. Great well outing. Done. Great outing. Well done. Well done. Hello, Miriam. Miriam. Hello, Miriam. Miriam. <laughs> 